All right, come on over here, Justin. So this is the side that we used our pouch powder on, and this is our original paint, okay? Do you see that? So I think we got us a nice mirror image left and right. It's not flawlessly perfect, but you can't see both sides of the car at the same time. But it's close enough where it's a professional job. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. When they pinstripe those out, when they put pinstripe on them, they're going to be flawlessly perfect, dude. That's how you lay your flames out on your vehicle if you're going to do left and right. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So what we got to do is we got to take some, take a good clean white ball rag or whatever you got, uh, wax free of course, and you want to also take some wax and grease remover. Do you see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm wiping that down. I'm getting all that dust and crap off of it. Okay. Do you see that? Look. Do you see that white? That's another reason you use the Intercoat Clear. Because when you wipe on it, chemicals, that's, I'm getting it off of this edge right here where you didn't get, get it on there. So using, using the DBC 500 to do your graphics with is very important. Because without that, this paint job would be ruined. You did a pretty good job. You got the white down. We got the flames down. What we got to do now is we got to start outlining our flames. Do you got any two inch tape? But what we got to do is, are you watching? Look what I'm doing. Is this how you taped them off last time? No. Okay, well, this is what you got to do. Okay. Once you get that area down, you see that? Then you got to come back and you got to take your exacto knife and it can't be, it has to be a semi dull exacto knife. And now you're going to go right in between on the top of the line there and you're going to cut that tape off. See how I'm doing that? And then you're going to come over here and you're going to cut this tape off. And then of course wherever the tape overlaps. And you can feel, you can feel the blue tape underneath, so you got to be very careful. You can start feeling the tape drag. You can feel the tape dragging on the blue tape. You can feel the knife, I'm sorry. So it's very important that you be very careful when you're cutting this. And wherever you overlap your yellow tape, you got to push a little harder. So I don't know if this knife is going to be sharp enough. We're going to find out here in a minute. And then when you pull your tape off, you want to pull it off from the inside, see? Because you're covering all the white paint. Now see, that didn't... All right, look what's happening. So I don't know, did I get this? I don't know if I got this edge right here or not. See there? See how I'm pulling that off? Mm -hmm. Okay, see where it was on top of each other? So we're gonna take our knife and cut it very gently. And then this is why I'm telling you you don't have enough because when you use your fingernail, well, you can chip the paint off. So you gotta make sure you put enough paint on everything. And then see, I'm going to take this, I'm going to use the edge of my knife, and then we're going to do that. And you know who usually does this for me? Manny? Yep. You got it. Manny the body shop girl. This is the one that's really important. You got to be really careful taking these home, dude, because if that tape comes off, you're going to have a hell of a time putting it back on. So we're going to push on that really hard with our thumb to make sure that sticks because we don't want that stretching, okay? 
because we're not going to have time to sit here and tape all these off, see? And the reason I tell you to do this one first, see, look at that. See how nice and clean that looks? Okay, and then, of course, you would put another piece here, like this. And what Minnie does, she'll go over the whole thing, and she'll cover everything up and then cut it off. I'm just showing you to so see, you go like that, and then you come back over here, and you don't even have to push, dude. Just you got an exacto knife? I probably I can't think where it is. If I yeah, have well, one. you're gonna have to go buy one and buy some blades. Okay. And if many can do it, trust me, you can do it. See there? Look at that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yes, it is. So on the outside, you would take this tape, and you can use this on the inside too, but that, on curves, that's the way to do it. See, you go like this, all right? See how I'm doing that? And then you just overlap it enough where it covers, just like that. And then what we're going to do on the outside, Justin, is we're going to take our little tape, just like this, and this is going to help hold it down so it doesn't, you see what I'm saying? And we're going to put the little tape out here because you're going to put paper on top of this, see? Am I right? Huh? Yes. Yeah, you're going to put paper on this so yeah, you don't have to be... You don't have to put the two in to cut it out. The only place you'll have to cut it out is right there. And then what I'll do is I'll take this and go like that. You can cut that one out. Now, remember what I told you. Don't use, if you use a brand new blade, make sure you use minimal pressure because if you don't, paint will get down in there and then you'll have to sand that off. That's why you use this DBC in case you get any red paint on this. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And then all you got to do is just cut out around the tape right in the middle and voila. All right, buddy. We got them all taped off. I took the extra mile. I went ahead and put the yellow tape on them. I don't want that blue tape peeling off, so we went ahead and did that. And uh, this is actually taped off for paint. And everybody can see what they look like. I think they came out nice. This is actually the pounce pattern door. And I think it came out awesome. Let's look at this one over here real quick. This is the door that we freehanded. We didn't use the pounce pattern. And you can see they look pretty damn close to the same. Am I right? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, are you happy with those, Justin? Yeah, beautiful. Now, how long would that have taken you? Uh, a week or more. A week? Yeah. But you would have never figured out the pounce pattern. Uh, and I would have tried to match it. Yeah. You know. Now, you were really surprised how I taped this off here because you said that you took all this little tape and you just broke little pieces off. And... Yeah, it took all day. Yeah, and that's, that's normally how people do it. But if you take the two-inch tape, you saw how quick this was, and then you cut it out and... The reason I marked this is because you never did it that way, so I kind of marked it so you can see what stays and what goes. Another thing is, you got to make sure that you push all this tape down really good when you get home to tape it. Um, if you come across any wrinkles like this, see this wrinkle right here, Justin? Yeah. You might want to take a piece of tape, like see that one? Just put a piece of tape over it okay. wherever you see wrinkles because paint will go inside there, okay? Okay. Yeah, you want to make sure the edges of it are airtight all the way around. Now look at this right here. You might clean that edge up just a little bit. It's overhanging. But once you get them pinstriped, they'll look awesome, okay? Yeah. okay. That took three hours. You said it was 1 o'clock. You yeah. got here at 10, so it took almost three hours to do all that. These are paint ready. You just put some paper on those. You're ready to roll, bro. Now, what do you got there, bud? You, you were showing me this book. What's this? Uh, it's a book I wrote about the town I grew up in. You wrote that book, so you must really love your town, huh? Well, no, I, I, I walked around town, and anybody that gave me photographs, I 
took them. Okay, so you went door to door asking for door photographs door. or what? They gave me photographs, then I photographed wow. them. Look at this. Look at that guy, he's got a coyote on his horse. A dead coyote? No, it's live. There's that's a, a, that's a, a pet. There's a, no, I, he was the government trapper. Oh, okay. I never understood why he's taking a live coyote home. Why? I think they got the urine for their traps. Oh, they take the urine and put it on the traps of the... Sent for the traps, huh. I think. Wow, that's crazy. Now, think... does he got a snout? He looks like he's got the snout he, locked. He does. He's got a stick through it and his snout's wired shut. Oh, son of a bitch. And this is just a, a pictorial book and stories of everything going on in the town you grew up in from what year? It goes back to the 19th century. 19th century. The house I grew up in. That's the house you lived in right there? Well, my, that's when my grandpa bought it. In the thirties, he paid uh, two hundred bucks for it. Two hundred dollars. Wow. See, That's look, awesome. See, look, he's got two of them. Oh, look at that! He sure does, and they're alive. That's what I'm saying. Why is he taking them home? I don't know. Maybe somebody can answer that question if they he's, know. He was the government trapper. Huh. Died of uh, really young of uh, pneumonia. Dang, dude. Now, are these any of your relatives in here? Or? That's mine. That's my great grandma. Wow. Now, this she is died, your relative here? Yeah, way back. Okay. She died of appendicitis. That's her and my grandma. Hmm. Now, who is this? My uncle Lowell. That's my grandpa's. Yeah, it looks like gangster action there with the old model. Oh, way, model T. I'm going to show you the model. Right? What is this? Okay. So, you literally wrote all. Now, when you say wrote, you wrote all this. Documentary and all this in, in information on this place. Some of it's from people's diaries. Oh, wow. Some of it's just me. So do they have this book in the town over there where... There's copies of this book, I think, in town somewhere. Huh. There's no store in my town. Nothing. 200 people in it. That's all that's there. That's where you grew up. 200 people. Yeah. So basically you were related to almost everybody there. Pretty much. Huh. You go back far enough. Look at that, it's my grandpa's Model A. That's it, right there. Look, they're out deer hunting. Deer hunting, Look deer there, he's got a deer there, and he's got a deer on top. Jeez. And I have that gun. You still have the gun? It's a 30 out 6 Mauser. Gosh. And I tried to find his 30 30 saddle gun, but I don't know what happened to it. Wow. Huh. It says 1942 on that license plate. Yeah. Now, who are all these kids? That's my grandma, she was a school teacher. And then that's all the kids in the class? Yeah, that was the whole class. That's it. Crazy, huh? Three girls and all boys. Wow. Look, this is the deer hunt back in the 60s. Oh, my Lord. Look at that. Back that's, in the 60s. That's what people would be deer hunting for. Opening weekend. Jeez. Back in the 60s. That's when they didn't buy uh, store-bought meat. Yeah, exactly. That's Roland Christensen. You ever heard of Christensen Arms? Uh-uh. He's in... Now, what's Christensen Arms? What is it? Uh, they build rifles. How long did it take you to write this book, Justin? Summer. That's it, huh? Yeah. Three months. Now, did you spend your own money publishing it and yeah. doing all that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I opened up somebody's shoebox and this was sitting there. Our fighting men need fighting dollars. Huh. It shows all the people killed in action in World War II, died while in training, missing, prisoners of war, and then everybody that served from each town. Jeez. And that's my town. And look how many people served. Look at all of them. And that's quite a bit that's for a, a, lot for for a, a tiny town. I mean, everybody went. That's like that's like almost the whole town. Right. So is that the county where all those little towns are? San Pete County. Yeah, that's the county, all the towns in the county. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, these are. V Day. V Day prayer. Look at that right there. Huh. Now, he was just pulled it up and I was really careful with it, trying not uh -huh. to rip it or uh -huh. I I didn't want to smooth it out. Yeah. This Very interesting book here. That's my mom. That's your mom right there? Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at it. Is that her right there? That's your grandma and your mom? Here. That's my aunt. Oh, okay. My uncle, he just died. Oh. Uh, huh. Thanksgiving. Wow. Well, Everybody's disappearing. So I bet everybody that gave you uh, pictures, they got a book, huh? Yeah. If they gave me a lot of pictures, I gave them a book. Yeah, yeah. Now, who is this? That's Roland Christensen. Christensen Arms. That's him. Yeah. Is he still alive? He's still alive. Yeah. This lady, I knew her. This yeah. is probably the 80s. She was 98 when she died. Mm -hmm. When she died, she had 37 grandchildren, 125 great grandchildren, Gosh. and 51 great great grandchildren. Oh my lord! Can you imagine? That is insane. Isn't that insane? She's like her own wow. ancestry, you know. Gosh. 
Born in 1901 in Monroe, Utah. Died in 1999. But look at that. How can you have 125 great That's birthday? crazy. That's insane. I got that out of her obituary from the paper. Wow. That that's, is, that's, that's insane. Anyway. All right. All right. Thank you yeah, very much, sure. Justin. Let's leave that right here. We're going to put that right there for now. And uh, that's how you do it, people. That's the way you do it. Justin King live over here at DIY Auto School in person to learn how to do flames. And you traveled how far? Three hours. Three hour drive. Over the San Rafael. Over the San Rafael. San yeah. Salina Canyon. Yep, yep. Now let me ask you this. If you did this flame job, how long would it have taken you? A month. A month, yeah. A bucket full of... Did you learn anything? That's the question. Oh yeah, I learned how to transfer them. That Did was simple. Did you learn how to transfer? You learned how to tape them off? Yeah, and exacto them. Now, now getting them laid down, that's the practice. You're going to have to practice, bud. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's sweet. the job of practice. Let's you know, make them all flow. Like I said, you start out with that top line right there, and then you just wham, 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 all the way down. That's the way you do it, bud. And you do three or four of those and fill your car up and... The next thing you know, you're at the Hot Rod Show winning trophies and getting pinstriping done, bud. Shake a hand, make a friend, All right, Justin. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Glad for you to come over here to DIY Water School and letting us make this video so everybody else can learn how to do it the appreciate right it, way. Pete. Thanks. All right, buddy. The right way, right there. Okay, so uh, Justin's back here with his doors. What happened, dude? What's going on? Well, I had a few problems. Got, got to talk a little loud, guy. We got the heater going here. What, I had what's a few up? problems. Yeah, what happened? I had some bleed through, so I tried to re retape it, repaint it. I didn't blend it right. Yeah. So what happened here? 